Matthew 11 verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. The word dominion is from the word dominate. And to dominate means be in charge. Be the one controlling situations. The, I'm sure my children will give us several other definitions tomorrow when they begin to minister zone by zone. But for the time being, just take this simple definition from me that to have dominion is to dominate, to be in charge. There will be other definitions. Before the white men came, engineers, if these people don't hear you tonight, they won't call you brothers and sisters. So they may use their power of domination to decrease certain things. So please hurry up. Before the white men came, Africans have their own kings. They rule themselves. They have their own armies. They fight with bows and arrows, spears, clubs, sword. Then the white men came with guns. And by brutal force, They took over. They defeated the armies of the black people. And for years, they had dominion. Almost invariably, Almost invariably, dominion is achieved by force. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven sovereign was violent. And who took it? How did they take it? Don't worry, or you will hear deep, deep teachings tomorrow. I'm, I'm waiting. But take this one as uh, a kind of introduction. Usually, the strong rules over the weak. You want to be the one in charge? <laughs> you want to be a world boxing champion? 
you must defeat the opponent. My coach, when I was a boxer, used to tell me, uh, used to tell us, those of us under him, when you enter into the ring with the opponent, make sure that at the end of the fight, only one fellow remains standing. Don't win by point. Because the coach can be settled. But if you knock out your opponent, there's nothing the referee can do. So you go in there with brutal force. I'm going to dominate this fight. At the end of it, I'm going to be called the champion. How many of you will leave this convention as champions? Let me hear it by the sound of your hallelujah. You want to dominate? Among other things, like I keep saying, my children will tell us more tomorrow. You must learn how to praise God violently. How much you praise Him? Violently. How did David become king? He wasn't the firstborn in the family. He wasn't even recognized by man. The promotion comes from God. And it's God who decides who is going to reach the top and who will not. 1 Samuel chapter 2 from verse 7 to 8. 1 Samuel 2, 7 to 8. It's God who will decide who goes up, who comes down. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 from verse 21 to 22. Acts 13, 21 to 22. He said, I have found David. Who will do all my will? And he made him king. And he began to dominate lion, dominate bear, dominate Goliath. <laughs> dominate the brothers who said you can't you can't become a king. He dominated them all. Why? He knew how to praise God. And he didn't do it gently. David praised God violently. Second Samuel chapter 6. From verse 14 to 23. Second Samuel 6, 14 to 23. When he was dancing, the Bible says he danced with all his might. That wasn't gentle praise. The unfortunate thing is that many of us children of God, we don't we don't appreciate that. When we are young in the Lord, we praise God freely. As we begin to grow in the Lord, our praise becomes more gentle, more civilized, <laughs> more polite. 
David, even after he became king, he said, uh -huh, now it is time. You know the, the passage I read to you? The wife saw her, I mean saw him, dancing vigorously. The Bible says he danced so vigorously, his belly came out of the dress. And the wife said, look at you, <laughs> king, dancing like that. He told the wife, you haven't seen anything yet. I'm dancing for the one who made me king. When you praise God from now, praise him violently. I've just returned from Britain. And you know, over there, everything is done <laughs> quietly. Because uh, I told my children if you conform and you become quiet, like these people. These are the people who brought the gospel to us. So we are now bringing the gospel to them. If you two cool down, you miss it. Uh, God is not now. Uh, 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 God is not deaf. Why must we? Why must we shout when we praise? Him? happened on the day of Pentecost. 120 people were praising God. The whole city had 120 praising God. The whole city, whole city had Amen. Amen. You want to be on top? You want to be the one in charge? Your praise must be the violent type. That's number one. Number two. Your giving must be of the violent type. Take Solomon, Second Chronicles chapter one, from verse six to fifteen. Second Chronicles one six to fifteen. <laughs> Before Solomon offered the thousand burnt offerings to God. Nobody had gone beyond seven before. Seven. But this boy said, seven for my God. And you know, he wasn't a very brilliant fellow. So when the priest saw him bringing in the cows, bringing in the cows, by the time they were getting to 100, they said, we hope KBAC is all right. 1,000 burnt offering. What did God say to him when he visited him? He said, there will be no king like you before you. 
there be no king like you after you. No, no, that's dominion, man. And he moved on. You know, by the time you get to Second Chronicles chapter seven, Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse five, he moved on. He said, <laughs> he said "That's what I've done is a joke." He moved on to twenty-two thousand cows, plus a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. And God said, all right, throughout your lifetime, you will not fight a single war. Because kings fight wars to enlarge their domain. God said, and we see to it that your domain will have no, nobody, nobody will even think of tampering with you. I mean, by the time you read 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 24, 1 Kings 4, verse 24, Bible tells us it has peace all around. Now that's dominion, man. Now, um, I'm going to be talking to everybody as soon as God permits me. I'm going to be apologizing for making a mistake, for saying that if we don't pay tight, you, you might not make it to heaven. I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's not in the Bible. What the Bible says is, is he at peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see God. Now, let me tell you. Listen to me. You know, it is possible to be right and wrong at the same time. I prove it to you. I mean, I'm a scientist, so I know that. For years, we thought that light travels in straight lines. Now, is that correct? At least those of you who know a little bit of physics will say, sure, the light doesn't bend at corners, it goes straight. But later on we discover it's not just what, not straight as a rod. Light travels in waves, going one direction, but in waves. It is wrong to limit you to 10%. At a time when some of you should be 20%, 30%, 40%. Ten percent should be for beginners. That, uh, I believe God will give me an opportunity very soon to tell you the details. 
Giving should be violently. Violently. You want to be the one in top? You want to be the one who will control finances? You're going to go far, far beyond 10%. I've told you the story before. <laughs> I don't know why I'm preaching this sermon before it is time, but well, maybe because God wants you to hear it first. Several years ago, I went to a trading camp meeting program and they wanted to raise funds for their Bible college. And a man came on stage, got permission from them and said, please let me talk and call his wife. And they whispered. And the husband made the announcement. He said, my wife and I have agreed. Whatever all of you contribute, is what we shall contribute. Everything, all of, and at that meeting we were 17,000. So whatever all of you contribute, that's what my wife and I will contribute. Uh -huh. And those who didn't want to contribute before say, hey, you're in trouble. At the end of the day, People gave like, I mean, those who didn't want to give before, gave angrily. At the end, he said, please count it, so I want to know. They counted the whole thing. $3.5 million. We said, now you are in trouble. He answered and said, brethren, is that all you can do? So I decide, <laughs> this man knows something I don't know. I must find out his secret. After the service, I cornered him. Tell me your secret. I came all the way from Africa. <laughs> he said, you want to know? I said, I want to know. He said, five years ago, I started the company with $500. And I said to God, you are my senior partner. The business is yours. Prosper the, job, the, the business. And I will not insult you with 10%. I will give you 90%. Oh, oh yes, I, I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard the story before. He says, sir, five years later, my turnover now is $50 million. I say, is that so? He said, yes. I say, okay, sir. Thank you. And from that day onward, I have been increasing my own percentage steadily. I'm not 90% yet. <laughs> but I'm far from 10%. It's wrong for me to say you should be pay only 10%. No, 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 no. Because we are going to dominate. <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, by the special grace of God, there are people here, when they are talking about the richest people in the whole world, they will mention your name. Violent giving. Number three, violent soul winning. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, from verse 5 to 8, Acts 5, Acts 8, 5 to 8. 
You know the story. Philip went to Samaria. Just one young fellow like you and turn the whole city upside down. Violence so winning. Somebody came to me, I think it was last month. He said they are talking of Vision 2032. I said, yes, so far of it. He said, yes. He said, Daddy, but I feel embarrassed. I said, what do you mean? He said, you mean we have to wait 10 years? He said, I thought you told us we should be doubling every year. <laughs> Violent so winning. He said, this is not how you began, daddy. I said, no. Because I was, was telling the truth. I started so winning violently. The very first Easter, after I became born, I became born again in July. The following Easter, I took as many young people as would follow me to somewhere in Badagri. Easter Monday, I said, hey, let's go and let's go and enjoy Easter Monday. We went there. I told everybody, just bring whatever food you have. When we get there, we'll combine. Believe it or not, that is the credo of what became the Congress. I won so violently. In my place of work at the University of Lagos, God may let you meet somebody who was there then. During break time, I compelled all those who are under my arm. I was a little big. Messengers, cleaners, typists. You must come to my office for Bible study by force. <laughs> but they began to enjoy it, and before you knew it, and no liar will make it to heaven. So you know this is, I'm telling you the truth. A time came that during break time in the Faculty of Science at the University of Lagos, you cannot find any typist at his post. You can't find a messenger. Why? Uh, when my office could no longer contain us, we find a classroom, break time. Nobody is supposed to be on break. And they reported me to my head of department and he called me. Professor Chiki will be of blessed memory. Adeboye, I said, sir. And he said, I, I know anybody who says, uh, you don't talk about Jesus Christ, he's wasting his time. I said, thank you, sir. And he said, but you are turning the faculty upside down. I'm not asking you not to preach. I know if I say that, I'll be wasting my time. But could you please wait till we have closed officially for the day before you begin to do this thing you are doing? I said, thank you, sir. I agree. By force. I, I preached the gospel violently, violently, not gently. Nobody begged me. I knew how close I was to hell before God saved my soul. And then I began to have disciples who would preach violently. <laughs> and I remember a case when uh, one of my daughters was coming from Ilori to Ibadan and boarded a, a, a taxi and there was one chronic uh, Muslim 
with him with her in the car. As soon as they sat down and the taxi began to move towards the father, she began to preach. And kept on and on. <laughs> By the time they got to Oyo, that uh, Muslim said, I want to come down. But you say you, you have paid for it, but they say, I, I want to come. Why? <laughs> because my daughter won't let him rest. Violent evangelism. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21, from verse 8 to 14, Acts of the Apostles 21, from verse 8 to 14, They said the Holy Spirit sent through a prophet to Paul. Don't go to Jerusalem. Oh, they are waiting for you there. Problem is, uh, I'm going. I'm not ready just to be bound. I'm ready to die if need be. I don't want to be to tell you stories of what we have done. There was a town in Kuala State where they said nobody dares go there to talk about Jesus. There's not, there wasn't a single church there. When I was in Lonnie and I heard about it, I said, you can't go there. I said, is that so? And there's no church there. They said, yes. I said, good. So I came to Lagos. I told my father in the Lord. He said, there's a town in the Lord where there's no church. And I want to go there and witness. I just want your backing. Can I go? <laughs> my father in the Lord said, you don't need to take permission for that kind of thing. And I just want to be sure. And we went. Today, that place where they say there are no church, I think is the headquarters of a province. You want to be in control? You must pray violently. Ordinary prayers might not move your mountain. In Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, the Bible says, when Bartimaeus said that Jesus was passing by, he cried. He didn't whisper. He cried so much that the crowd around knew this fellow was crying. And they told him to shut up. And what did he do? The Bible says he cried a lot more louder. Did he get what he wanted? In Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28, Matthew 15, 21 to 28, when that woman came to Jesus Christ and said, my daughter is grievously vexed of the devil, she was so loud that the disciples said to the Lord, this woman is disturbing us. Send her away. The noise is too much. The sick keep quiet. No. When you don't have plan B, you will pray. When there's nowhere else to turn to, you will pray. I've told you I was on this camp, this campground. 
early in the 1980s. When God called me to full time, I told him, leave me now, let me continue to serve you as a lecturer. The government is paying me. So I'm preaching your gospel free of charge. Somebody else is paying. Now you are asking me to come full time and he told me 24 hours is not going to be enough for what I have for you. Then I came to full time. And I was expecting the church to grow. I was expecting power for miracle signs and wonders that will draw the crowd. And nothing was, nothing seemed to be happening. So one night I prayed. Daddy, forgive me, oh, we're alone. Nobody is here. I told you to leave me alone. You didn't agree. And you have to do something. It's either that you empower me to do this job, or you take me home. I mean, I can't go back to lecturing now. Everybody had known that I've already resigned. It's not one year now, not two years. He heard. And there was an earthquake on this ground. We were in the very, very first auditorium. The total number of houses on this camp there, if we could call them <laughs> houses, the total number of houses on this camp there was less than 30. He heard. The ground shook. They could feel the tremor as far away as Ijebode. It was in the news. Pictures that they were hanging on the floor, on the wall, came crashing down because somebody prayed on the campground. And things changed. You're going to pray tonight. You're going to pray violently. And as I was watching, one of uh, the young men who preached, he told you about how to do the praying, do it in tongues. Because Paul said, I pray in tongues more than ye all. Because if you are praying with understanding, by the time you have prayed for one hour, you have already said everything you want to say. But if you are praying in tongues, <laughs> one hour is you are just warming up. You want to have dominion? You need violence. What do I say you need? And now that you are young, that's the time to do the job. Now that you have energy, you can jump up and down. You can, oh God. You know, before the camp grew like this, I would start in what is called Open Heavens House now, at night. I will walk through all the places where you now have uh, <laughs> ways and so on. There were bush paths. I will pass through the bush path in the jungle, in the middle of the night, Come this way, go to Loto, come out on the expressway, walk all the way back to the 
a place down there and then come back home. I will leave home, many a times I leave home at 11 p.m. and return by 5. Many a times I, it will be even 6 a.m. On one occasion I remember those days I had my dogs with me. On one occasion I've gone round and round and my legs were aching me after about six hours or so and I sat on the rock somewhere down there and my dogs saw me sitting down they said okay if he's resting we too can rest <laughs> so the dogs stayed around me and I fell asleep sitting on the rock there you know when you are sufficiently tired you can sleep, you can sleep standing <laughs> and then some people were going we were very few people around in those days and uh, I think they were going about their business and they saw me sitting on the rock with my eyes closed they thought I was praying and so they wanted to come and greet me and then the dogs began to growl and I woke up And now you pray for 10 minutes and you are waiting for somebody to ring the bell. And yet, you want to be greater than I. And you are going to be greater than I. I think if these people have announcement to make, they should come and make the announcement now. Because the moment you begin to pray, don't let anybody disturb you. And don't pray with understanding. Just pray in tongues. Blast open the windows of heaven by crying in the language of the most high God. Everything you do as youth. The Bible says I write to you, youth, because you are strong. Use that strength to take dominion by force. Stand on your feet and begin to talk to your God. It's up to you now. It's up to you. Go ahead and just cry to the Most High God. I, I must, I must have dominion. I must have dominion. Just go ahead and cry to the Almighty God. Pray in the spirit, not, not with understanding. <laughs>